Simple yes or no. These people are heroes. Yes. 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 Uh, I'm strong. To somebody. That's the right answer. To somebody. And no one can take away the heroic acts these individuals have done. Uh, now, certain individuals on the list, no names, Tiger Woods, have potentially uh, damaged their reputation as heroes. But in my opinion, you know, these are not my heroes. They might be someone's hero, not mine. Want to know who my hero is? George Carlin. <laughs> now, Carlin, in his last uh, HBO special, 2008, right, about six months before he passed away, he opens his comedy show with the following, and this just changed my thinking on what it meant to be a hero. He said, screw Lance Armstrong. Screw Tiger Woods. Aren't you tired of being told who your heroes are? I'll decide who I want to look up to. Thank you very much. Cool. And what Carlin says is that not to take away from what these heroic individuals have done, rather for us to think about what can we do to be a hero? We don't need to have the biggest technology company in the world. We don't need to be the most successful author. We don't need to change world peace or be the greatest athlete or strike movements. What we need to do, myself included, is to be a hero to our customers. And I think about my heroes. I think about my parents, grandparents, mentors, colleagues, friends, high school English teacher, these are my heroes. And I want you to start thinking about what you can do to plug yourself in. That's my suggestion, is that a hero, it's not about achievements, it's about attributes. You don't have to do all that amazing stuff you saw in those illustrations before. The good news is, you can all do this, and I'm going to share a few examples. It's as simple as being the residue of mattering consistently. A hero is someone who is the aftershock of contributing persistently. You're the consequence of being the best and the highest version of yourself intentionally. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Preach on, brother <laughs> So the question is not if you're a hero, but the question is when your company talks, when people hear your company speak, I get 50% if you make a sale. <laughs> are people taking notes? And what we're going to look at are a few examples to put this to use, starting with number one differentiate between what you sell and what they buy. 1986. Yeah. Every Sunday, my grandfather would take myself, my brother, and my cousins to the greatest restaurant on earth. What is it? Burger King? Really? <laughs> McDonald's! Mickey D's, baby! BK Lounge didn't come along until later. We went to Burger King, or excuse me, to McDonald's. It was his birthday. He had to wear the hat. It was his 55th birthday. And this was our tradition. And we went for 12 years every Sunday. That was our thing. We stopped going because, you know, we got busy. We kind of got too old for it. Plus, we'd like to live after the age of 40. <laughs> now, when you go to McDonald's, who has kids under the age of 10? You take them to McDonald's? Yeah. Okay, cool. Some people do. Some people don't. If you think about it, there's a huge differentiation because you don't realize when you're six years old what's going on at McDonald's. You might know what they sell, but you don't know what you're buying. 26 years later, here's all the grandkids and my grandpa still at McDonald's. Aww. And look at him, he's just so proud because he's got all the grandkids, we got our Shrek toys and the Happy Meal. <laughs> We're set. The only difference was, in addition to Wi Fi, which is now available at McDonald's, I saw this. What's the red box, anybody? DVD rental. For how much? DVD rental. Oh, it's amazing. But then I thought, well, but why would it? I mean, I've seen it like at drugstores, but why would they put it in the drive through <laughs> Until you start realizing that what they sell isn't what you buy. Picture this. Saturday morning, 9.30, you pile your four screaming demon children into the back seat of your SUV. <laughs> On the way to grandmother's house, you stop by McDonald's to get Happy Meals for all the kids. That way, for the next two hours on the way to grandma's house, those four kids in the back seat will do what? Yeah. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> So what better reinforcement of that than to get a copy of The Lion King for a buck so they can watch Simba and Mustafa. So my question is, if what they sell in one word is food, what you buy in one word is what? Peace. Peace. <laughs> McDonald's sells food that people buy silence. What do you sell? And what do your customers buy? Now, I was curious about this. Now, we were in Vegas last week for the other Ultra presentation. You guys are way cooler. And what we did was uh, some research. And I wanted to share the research that I did for you guys uh, to look at the answer to this key question. Right, at least he's honest. Absolutely. It's Fred. Fred. Yeah. 
but, but enough about my dad. So, <laughs> so this is my Facebook page. How many of you are using Facebook for your business? Keep your hands up if you're making money from it. Yeah, me neither. It's okay. You don't have to make money on social media. I'm not sure that's the point. This is my Facebook page where I have 2,441 fake friends. And what I've discovered is that social media is not a tool for selling. It's a listening platform for why people buy. Now, I'm not like a social media expert just because I'm under 40. This is just what I've seen. And I use this for you guys. I did research on behalf of Ultra, and I asked this question. At a jewelry store, what customers are really buying is fill in the blank. Now, I'm going to get answers from you in just a minute. But before I do so, would you like to hear what people said? Yes. All right. What are they really buying? Your love, status, a celebration, the result of amazing lighting, shiny rocks, prestige, a statement, a promise, a dream, a keepsake, something the children will fight over after you're gone. <laughs> All right, now we're talking. What do you guys think? At a jewelry store, what do your customers really buy? Just yell it out, guys. Well, cool, your honesty. They're buying you, they're buying the service, yeah. A memory. A memory, thank you. Happiness. Emotion. Emotion, cool. Keepsake. Keepsake, thank you. Someone else's love. Yeah, the Beatles were wrong. <laughs> what else are they buying? The experience, the value, an opportunity not to sleep on the couch. Are they buying anything else? A bribe. A bribe, sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm fascinated that no one said the one that everyone said in Vegas. I know. Isn't that weird? Right, isn't that weird? Yeah. What sells? Thank you. Maybe that's what they're buying. It's a that's the question, is what are you really in the business of?